Hello, kings and queens. This is your time to be a grounding flavor. So Big Zulu has taken us back to the times when hip hop was exciting. Hip hop was exciting, you know. Uvele wens was wens a moya and it's 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 wonderful. You know what, guys? I think I need some H two O in my life. Yeah, I really do. Anyways, so hip hop has finally woken up. Kuvuga matlos, and all he had to do was to just diss a couple of people, and they just released. I mean, KO replied, and the reply is absolutely amazing. Questa replied, um, well, Duncan murdered him. He murdered him. And as for Casper, he was he was pretty dope, okay? So, <laughs> let me just talk a little bit about each of the rappers. So, KO is one of those rappers that's able to hook you, you know? He makes you fall in love, and then he ghosts you. But he replied. And he was the first one to do so, which is pretty amazing. And then there's Duncan. You know, Duncan is so good. You know, he's so good with his words, but his words are very rough. They are so rough. They can make a grown man cry. But that just goes to show that he's a genius. And... I really don't think that he gets the attention that he truly deserves. I don't know why, though. He's pretty much underrated, but he is so damn good, you know? <laughs> and first and foremost, let's just talk about the imagery. We're going to talk about the imagery in each of the tracks, you know? So, the first imagery we're going to talk about is that of ko he he had this cover of a shoe right so <laughs> this shoe has so many no negative connotations attached to it like it is that shoe that you just know when you see that shoe it's worn by an old guy and he's from a particular place like you can just tell you know what's yes saying this this guy is not from Ekasi based on that shoe and you can tell the age group as well so it's predominantly worn by old men <laughs> anyways excuse me and that shoe on its own it just says a lot you know i think the shoe on its own is a pretty good diss you know and then there's questa so Questa put an image of, an, of a quantum, which really makes sense because Obig Zulu drove taxis and he's also a taxi owner. I don't know. That's what the people say, you know. So that image makes sense, you know. It's so relevant to him. And immediately you just think Irenki, you think of a person who, you know, who who's in the taxi business so that image makes sense you know these guys really made an effort and they really thought about everything and then there's a picture of a pineapple oh my god oh my god duncan can can be the only one to do that honestly he can be the only one to do that i mean that picture of a pineapple and then it's written big dunu oh my god oh oh my goodness that picture when i look at it it gives you the illusion that okay this person is rough on the inside but they really just softies so that picture alone i think it's even worse than all the other pictures combined because that one, mm -mm, mm -mm, it just tells you that, yay, you're a softie. I'm going to murder you. And that's exactly what he did, you know? <laughs> so, 
So, Big Zulu did for 150 bars. And then, everybody just replied. And then, Uzulu boy also do, did in Tlambluk. And I must say, I'm quite disappointed, you know, because the word itself, it has so many meanings. Like, it's deeply encoded with so many things and i feel that he could have just played more with words but then he didn't you know when you look at the word in Tlambulugo, it means a cleansing you know and that's exactly what he did he just cleanses himself of this hip-hop game in a way and I, w I just wanted so much you know just from that because it, like culturally the word has so much uh sig significance you know it is a purification it represents um it represents a purification it represents a cleansing and i feel that he could have done so much more but he just decided to give us 50 bars but he did say that it's not a diss track and of course it really wasn't a diss track I mean, it really wasn't a diss track at all. He could have played so much with the words, but it's not a bad track either, you know. But I, it just left me wanting more, you know. And it's not even half of what he can do. So with regards to Zulu Boy, I was disappointed, but then he did mention that it's not a diss track, so... All is well, you know. And then, let's go to the other people. Wow. There's Cuesta. So, Cuesta gave me those uncle vibes, you know. He just, he sounded like a man, you know, reprimanding a child. But he did it in such a stylish way. He did it in such a way that it's not insulting, but he tells you exactly what you need to know you know so i'm just gonna quote a few of his lyrics so he said when i call my heat as pig loto is simple value of fee is simple land of value figure bambi mike ube no laga utta to blind candy cylindy hook i mean <laughs> that pretty much says everything you know you think you're the shit but all we're just waiting for is your hook. We don't care what you need to say. You know, that was a pretty dope line. Gitu ya kupuga. Kanti ubona mi nagi stepis. Damn. But you know what was my favorite line? When he said, my, left, uh, my leftovers changed your life. Guys, 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 guys. And... He played so much with his words. It was really, really beautiful because there's somewhere towards the end, Eti Begangyak Zuma, Isnaipas Yakala Ikandangyal Pula. So think about it. Didn't uh, Duduzani Zuma had, you know, that trending video um, where, like, he was... He was playing the big Zulu song. I don't remember the video exactly, but he had that, um, you know, that trending video not so long ago. And like, yeah, you remember it. I know. I know you do. <laughs> Anyways, and he had some pretty amazing lines. So, um, Cuesta gave me those uncle vibes and it was just so fascinating but he's not just any kind of uncle he's this cool uncle an uncle that you want to chill with an uncle that can remind you that he is the boss you know <laughs> so that's what i felt when i listened to his um this response to to the 150 bars you know and then there's ko mm. Okay, oh, like I mentioned before, he is one of those rappers that really, really gets you in. He grabs you and then he, he just loves you. Just like that. He coasters you. Like, seriously? But, and I'm glad that he kind of dissed 
all these rappers because otherwise we wouldn't have had good music like honestly when was the last time when hip-hop was this exciting you know when were we going to get the music that we deserve as the people <laughs> anyways <laughs> he said um something about yo guys guys Mm, 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 mm. And he mentioned something about him being pissed off because he blue ticked he blue ticked them on WhatsApp. That's why he's making a noise. And then he mentioned something about um him getting onto a karakara. Well, him and his sister getting onto a karakara. Anyways, he was dope. He was really dope. And then I had to listen to Casper in your vest, four steps back. Hmm. Yeah, I had to take four steps back, guys. I really had to take four steps back. Anyways, I feel like I really needed to analyze these bars. And there were some disturbing lyrics in this track. And I, I don't know. I think I will need some sort of therapy session after this because they were quite disturbing to say the least so he said um i beat the charges you beat the woman guys that that's not that's not cool you know and he also mentioned that this this right here is karma for all the women you've abused you know, I, you see if if this is true if this is true hey, i'm so not okay with this you know, and then he mentioned something about the situation is as tight as your pants. God, I think if he says that to you, because we know. But anyways, we're not there. <laughs> and then he said, Utamaya, Kari, Ujaivi, Tipa, Tipa. Yo, mm. that felt like a chalk slam. That really felt like a chalk slam. And then he also said something about Horsey is the nigger who owns those songs. Like, I have to ask, do people own their songs? Like, who, who actually owns their songs? And if, if Big Zulu's songs are owned by somebody else, does he own his own songs? Like, I'm so confused. I, I don't know. I'm so confused. But for his sake, I really hope he owns his song. We don't want another, you know, Zahara situation. It's not cool, guys. It's really not cool. But anyways. <laughs> and he said, you only blew up after my feature. Yeah. So he's saying, I made you, you know. And last but not least, guys, U Duncan. Yo, U Duncan does not need me to analyze the, the lyrics, honestly, because he murdered a, a everything, you know. He's, he called the track Umwab, right? And in Tayan Zilu Uveluam Mwabanja Street. And it's not really you know, friendly, what he said. So I am scared that if I say it, then I might be penalized for something if I really decode the lyrics. But what you need to know is that he murdered the verses. He murdered, he, he, he dissed him. I mean, guys, that is what I refer to as a diss track. When a person just disses you, they go deep, you know? And... Yo, I was speechless, but then I understand why nobody ever disses Duncan, you know, after that. But Uzulu boy was very brave. I think it's Uzulu boy. My goodness, sorry. Did I just say that? Umpixul. Umpixul was very brave, honestly. He was very brave by putting himself on the firing line, by actually 
accepting a challenge, you know, because I listened to the interview that they had on Metro FM. It was Big Zulu, uh, KO, and Questa, and they spoke about the tracks, you know, and it's cool to see that the guys are actually friendly with each other. And then Questa mentioned something about, um, you know, hip hop being a sport, you know, and you just have to show your skill. And this is exactly what happened, you know. It's a spot. There's a person who came up and, you know, just just everybody. In this case, it was uh, Big Zulu. And then he got people, you know, who responded. And this, is, this makes hip-hop so exciting. And I'm so excited because it has to take a lot from you, you know, to... Put yourself on the firing line because you know people are going to reply. You know they're going to reply. But you do not have control over what they're going to say. They're not going to be friendly with you. They're not going to be nice. They're going to, you know, show the lyric contents. They, they're going to throw bars at you. You're going to feel like you're in prison, you know. Who, and once you do, do a diss track, it's not like you have to do another one. But you can. But... We, we go according to the respond at this point. Okay, and that was it. This was murder. And it, it was great. It, it's cool. And I love how everybody has taken it upon themselves to respond. And the replies are so amazing. They show the lyric genius. They show the artistry. They show just what hip-hop is made of they show you know e even the poetic side of hip-hop because each person wants to paint a vivid picture and regardless of whether we agree with what they say or we don't or we feel that it's too much or we or we are deeply in love with it the point is hip-hop hasn't been this exciting in a very very long time time and i for one am enjoying every moment so this is what i think is going to happen well this is what should happen anyways because this is a very good time you know for each of these artists they should release all of them one by one release and they work better on be on point because they don't even need marketing they're still hot right now they are the hottest thing you know I know KO is going to release. Yeah. But I wonder if the other people are going to release as well. But this is the moment to actually release because everything is just trending. You know, it's on fire. We just want more and more and more of this. Anyways, guys, my name is Bule Lomieni. And thank you so much for joining me today. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.